Hey everybody, um, haven't been working on the 68 too much lately, um, so i kind of been started messing around with another little small project that I want to talk to y'all about. Um, it's kind of funny, it's kind of fun, um, it's a small little, uh, scooter that my neighbor had underneath his front steps of his house, it was just kind of shoved underneath there, and it seemed like it had been sitting a while, so I asked him about it, and, um, uh, he said he'd bring it down so I could tinker on it because uh, I like to get things running and stuff. I hate to th see things sitting like that. So uh, uh, let me show you this thing real quick. It's, uh, I believe it's a 1981 or 82. I'll verify that real quick. We'll look at that on the uh, tag on the bike. But uh, it's like a Suzuki FA50. So it's a two-stroke scooter from the early 80s. It's a Suzuki and um, I'll show you it a little bit here in a sec, but uh, it does like an oil and gas mix kind of thing because it's a two-stroke, but the tanks are separate. So I'll show you all that real quick. Um, we'll take a quick look at the bike. So let me pull you off the, uh, the old tripod, hopefully not shut you off like I always do. And we'll take a look at this bike real quick. So let me flip this around. So here's the scooter. Like I said, it is a Suzuki. It is a FA50. And let's see here. We got the tag right here. I think it tells you, let me get a light real quick. Let's see here. Here we go. It is, um, Let's see if I can read this. There we go. I think there it is. Anyhow, right there, if you look at the very back of that, if it would focus, there we go. I think it says 08 of 82 or 3 of 82 or something. So right around there, 82, 83, something like that. So... He brought the bike over to me. I, um, you know, started just tinkering with it a little bit, checking it over, seeing if it was going to do anything. And the typical, uh, the typical way to start checking, um, a scooter is the first thing you want to do is you want to check for spark. So you, uh, you know, you undo the cap on the spark plug, you, unscrew the spark plug then you stick the spark plug back in the cap stick it up against the fin here so it's grounded and then on this one it's got a kickstart so you push down on the kickstart and it uh you know should spark if the if everything's working right so this one sparked so i was like well, well this thing should start up then so i started off by spraying like some uh uh, I don't think I started with starter fluid. I did something else, maybe just some uh, two-stroke gas or something like that uh, to try to get it to start. And when I would kick it over, it just did not, it would start to start up and then it would immediately shut right down. So I had to try to figure out what was going on with this thing. And I just, you know, obviously just tried kicking it and kicking it and kicking it, trying to get it to start. Um, you know, adjusting the choke, trying different throttle amounts, blah, 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 to try to get it to start. So um, just couldn't get it to start. And then I walked away from it thinking that maybe I would think on it a little bit and something would come to mind as, as to what was wrong with it. So I came back out the next day and started messing with it. And when I was kicking it over, I noticed that it just seemed like it was building a ton of compression and it was actually letting the exhaust gases come out through, <laughs> through the head here, you know, um, because it had no place to go. The exhaust pipe that was on here, um, it's actually sitting up on the bench here. This exhaust pipe was completely clogged and choked, so it could not let the exhaust gases out. So um, uh, it just popped in my head. I said exhaust 
that that exhaust must be clogged so i went ahead and um removed the exhaust and she fired up and ran um now it's super super loud and annoying right now so i'm not going to start it up um in this garage because it would just be like ying, 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 ying. so it's like kind of loud and obnoxious without the muffler so anyhow being that this is my neighbor's bike i um consulted him about everything i said you know hey i think uh i think i got it running fine i said i think the exhaust is the problem and it's funny because he was here when we first started messing around with it and um we were discovering kind of what was going on with the bike together um so he went and did his research i did my research and we both came back and talked about it and said um yeah we think that uh the exhaust is clogged up so went online did some research about clogged exhaust pipes and um quite literally there was a few different ways to uh repair the exhaust being that it was clogged um probably the easiest and this is literally what we did is we just built a fire <laughs> literally built a fire and suspended the exhaust pipe over top the fire in an attempt to heat up the pipe really good and start to loosen up any kind of debris in there and hopefully start to drip down out of the exhaust pipe. Now my neighbor is a, a active hunter an outdoorsman um, and building a fire is right up his alley. That is like exactly his, um, you know, idea of having a nice afternoon building a fire, uh, you know, maybe burning off some of the yard waste and uh, enjoying that kind of stuff. He's very active outdoors guy. So I knew as soon as I saw the solution was to build a fire and put that thing in there, he would be all over that. So I asked him, we talked about it and I said, well, what do you want to do? I said, do you want to try put it in the fire? I said, I don't think it'll ruin it. You know what I mean? Um, if anything, it'll just fix it. You'll just paint it. I said, just run it under a wire wheel when you're done and, and spray it. And that's what he did. He actually ran it under a wire wheel and sprayed it a little bit. Um, so I am going to, uh, uh, mess around with this scooter, uh, for a little bit this afternoon. I'm going to put the exhaust back on it. And, um, and this is actually, this part right here is part of it. This is actually your foot pegs and, uh, also like a little engine guard that I think diverts air right towards the engine. Um, and then this is a this is a guard that went over the uh, the muffler, so this sits like on here on the muffler a little bit. It's supposed to be a little, I think like a leg guard or something. So when I first took it apart, the underside of this was like very very rusty. So I, um, I took a Dremel tool and kind of ground that down a little bit. Uh, the 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 major rust that was on there. I just took a, a wire wheel attachment on a um, Dremel and just, you know, buzzed over it and knocked off all the uh, rust scale and stuff like that. And then I um, sprayed it down with um, what's called a um, acid etched primer. Let's see here. I have it over here on the uh, shelf. So this is a Rust-Oleum self etching primer. And I believe you use this type of product, um, you know, at, when you get something down to bare metal, it'll rust real easy, especially if it's in any kind of like salt, you know, water environment, like down at the coast or something. Um, and if any water, if it's exposed to water, it'll just start to rust real quick, bare metal. So you want to put something on it and, um, you know, so after I ground it down, I sprayed this uh, self-etching primer and I believe it's supposed to help keep rust from occurring anymore um but i could be wrong i'm not an expert on this stuff this is just so and then after i um sprayed it with that self-etching primer i hit it with this uh duplicator caliper paint and you can see it says let's see if i can get this to focus um up to 600 degrees wow that just will not focus weird so anyhow, um, 